In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the introductory prayers are for the Holy Father, for the intentions, and for the peace, the unity, and the mission of Christ Church, as she keeps this feast of the baptism of the Lord, as she continues to keep the feasts of Christmas and Epiphany's night. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father of Almighty. And thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. 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 Grace the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection, we pray as at Mass for this parish, for our life and work and witness as God's people here together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh, my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who have the most need of thy mercy. The second glorious mystery, the Ascension, we pray this mystery for the sick and for the suffering, and we pray particularly for all those whose names are on the prayer list of this parish, for those who have been commended to our prayers by name. For all those who will spend today in hospital. Our Father. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil army. Sinners now that the hour of our 
To remind ourselves of our various precautions, um, our song, well done everybody, is the hand squeezy stuff, both for me and for at the door there. Um, the pews are all set out at a, uh, roughly one and a half metres, I think that's four foot six in old money. Um, and so when we come up for Holy Communion, leave your face covering on please until you're at the front. I shall be inside the communion rail between two pairs of arms, that is as close to two metres as we can get. Um, receive Holy Communion here, pop your mask back on, and then out through the sacristy and round through the car park. David, I wonder if you could possibly go first, just to uh, mind the step, as I always say. Um, and then we come back in. The one possible bottleneck to think about is the, the path, but I think with relatively few people here this morning, relatively few, um, I don't think that will be much of a problem as we wait for the very end of the Holy Communion. Um, Shamala will play during the offertory and um, Holy Communion is to keep our minds focused. And of course, there's the opportunity to light a candle at the end of the crib. Um, please do remember this, again, has the potential to be a bit of a bottleneck. We just need to be sensible about it. Um, and if anybody's wondering, I. Um, piggybacked on the coattails, if you can piggyback on coattails of the prep school during the week. Um, I had a test and I have to say I've never been so pleased to see the word negative <laughs> coming on my telephone. About half an hour later I have to say I was really impressed. Um, but, um, but there we are. Uh, so um, at least last Wednesday. Um, uh, so I say as, uh, I think we're as safe as we can possibly be. Um, but because um, obviously we need to be sensible. Uh, if things change, well, I'll let people know. And I suspect the newspapers will let people know as well. But for now, we're here, and we glorify God together, and we offer the sacrifice of the Mass, as always, on the Sunday. One of our parish Masses is always for the parish, for us as God's people here in this place, for those of us who are here at this moment, and also for those people I know the number is growing each week. Um, uh, you can see the statistics if you go into Facebook. Um, the number who are joining us over the, over the broadcast, either at this moment or maybe a little bit later on today. Uh, wherever we are, and however we are praying this Mass, we pray it is this parish as God's people here in Boring, Woodcote and all the other villages in, here in our part of South Africa.
continues to call her children to celebrate the great feasts of the Incarnation. We celebrate the baptism of the Lord as the Magi last week in the Feast of the Epiphany recognized Christ for who he really is, the light of the world. So at the baptism in Jordan by John the Baptist, the Father's voice resounds and Christ is made manifest as the second person of the Trinity here on earth for our salvation. And so as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Mass on this great feast, we call to mind our sins and rejoice in the forgiveness he brings. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptised in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved Son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be well-pleasing to you. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, O come to the water, all ye who are thirsty. Though you have no money, come. Buy corn without money and eat, and at no cost, wine and milk. Why spend money on what is not bread, your wages on what fails to satisfy? Listen, listen to me, and you will have good things to eat and rich food to enjoy. Pay attention, come to me, listen, and your soul will live. With you I will make an everlasting covenant out of the favours promised to David. See, I have made of you a witness to the peoples, a leader and a master of the nations. See, you will summon a nation you never knew. Those unknown will come hurrying to you for the sake of the Lord your God, of the Holy One of Israel, who will glorify you. 
Seek the Lord while he is still to be found. Call to him while he is still near. Let the wicked man abandon his way, the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn back to the Lord who will take pity on him, and to our God who is rich in forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways. It is the Lord who speaks. Yes, the heavens are as high above earth as my ways are above your ways, my thoughts above your thoughts. Yes, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and bread for the eating. So the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty, without carrying out my will and succeeding in what it was sent to do. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. The responsorial psalm, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Truly God is my salvation. I trust I shall not fear. For the Lord is my strength, my soul. He became my saviour. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation. Give thanks, sorry, sing a psalm to the Lord, for he has done glorious deeds. Make them known to all the earth. People of Zion, sing and shout for joy. For great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation. It was at this time that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised in the Jordan by John. No sooner had he come up out of the water than he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit like a dove descending on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. My favour rests on you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. safety thing we don't uh, don't share lecterns um, so all these things um, these tiny things but the present situation helps us just cast our minds back over all the things that we've got used to since um, we started again in July the epiphany season the great 
great feast that we celebrated last Wednesday, as I've said so often, is actually older, and if you were to take a census, to use a word that's been in our minds these last few weeks, of Christians celebrating over the last three or four weeks, I suspect that worldwide the Epiphany would have been kept with rather greater solemnity than the 25th of December. In Russia, or in most parts of the Orthodox world, in fact many Catholic countries as well, France and Spain particularly, there will be enormous festivities for the 6th of January. And not just for that one day, because the church's traditional lectionary, it's not quite so clear in the modern way to be honest, but traditionally all the Sundays that then take us up to Lent have a story about Jesus being made manifest in different ways. The most famous of them, of course, will be the wedding at Cana in Galilee, but there are all these others, and the one which fits that pattern today is the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. Again, as I said a couple of weeks ago, there are two Gospels which give us the details that we see on the front of our Christmas cards. It's St Luke that we are indebted to forever for the story of the shepherds and the angel choir and that night in Bethlehem, the little town of Bethlehem, the city of David. It is Matthew who gives us the details of the Magi. You might assume that it's the other way around, actually, given that Matthew is more concerned with, or most concerned with, Jesus' Jewish identity as the Messiah. But no, it's the other way around. That the Magi, these mysterious characters representing people from the ends of the world, Asia, Africa, America, Europe, Antarctica, yes, Antarctica, <laughs> that they are all represented in the Magi, who come and kneel before him who is the light of the world. Mark, of the first three, doesn't appear to have a Christmas story at first, neither does St John, but of course St John does. St John has that chapter one, as we now call it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was made flesh. That is a Christmas story, even though it doesn't have shepherds, or stars, or angels. Interestingly, John's version of the Nativity, those 18 verses which we heard a couple of Sundays ago, John's version includes one other human being. Not Joseph, not Our Lady, but John the Baptist. And Mark. Today, the church has given us Mark's chapter one. He wouldn't have called it chapter one, we do. But the beginning of Mark's gospel. Again, a bit like John, we don't see shepherds or magi. We don't see a journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem and back again via Egypt. No, Mark seems to have missed all of that out. And in fact, he's turned the clock on something like 30 years to the start of Jesus' public ministry. He's the odd gospel out, if you want. But, but, and of course there is always a but when we think about things in these terms. The beginning of Mark's Gospel that we just heard, in fact, makes the same point that Matthew and Luke and John, in their different ways, have been making. Because this is all about who is Jesus of Nazareth? We've been given answers to that in the shepherd's journey down the hillside. We've been given an answer to that in the journey of the Magi, and then Again, as T.S. Eliot reminds us in that great poem, just as importantly, their journey back to the lands from which they came. We've been given a clue to that in John's great prologue. And here, Mark, in telling the story of John the Baptist and Jesus together, 
as they were together 30 years before as cousins, born not so very far apart. This is another way of saying Jesus of Nazareth, the carpenter's son, as it was thought, he is more than the carpenter's son. He is the second person of the Trinity made flesh for us. Now John's Gospel is the shortest. Mark's Gospel is the shortest of the four that we have. He's probably writing in a hurry. He's probably writing whilst the legions of the Roman Empire are beginning to round up Christians, many of whom were to meet a grisly end during the persecution of the middle of the 60s AD. He doesn't spare any time with unnecessary detail. He plunges straight into the story. And as his gospel goes along, he's going to give us three points where the identity of Jesus as the Son of God is made absolutely crystal clear for all those hearing his gospel at first and reading it down the last 20 centuries. The first one is the one we just heard. There at the River Jordan, the voice of the Father, this is my beloved Son. Chapter 1, as we call it. There are 16 chapters in Mark's Gospel. Chapter 8 is pretty well halfway through. The story of the Transfiguration. There on the mountain, as we celebrate in August, the blinding light just for a moment, when Peter and James and John see Jesus as he really is there, transfigured by the glorious light of heaven. And again, the Father's voice, the voice that acknowledges the Son. And then the third one at the end of his Gospel is on the afternoon of Good Friday. And that takes us into that reading from St. John, not his Gospel this time, but his first letter. There are three witnesses, the water, the blood and the spirit. And as we read and meditate upon and pray the story of Good Friday afternoon, we see Jesus handing over the spirit, which means so much more than just ceasing to breathe as a human being on the cross. We see the lance of the soldier in the side from which flows blood and water, the origins of the church's sacramental life, not just the waters of baptism, but the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Because all of this is caught up in the greatest mystery of all, the mystery of Easter. And Easter, of course, is crowned with the giving of the Spirit to the Church, to you and to me, to those who have preceded us, and those who will follow after us. All of this caught up in the mission of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And thus it is that, in fact, today's story, although probably in terms of the story of Jesus, it's 30 years after the story of Mary and Joseph on Christmas night, of the Magi, whenever it was that they made it to worship the young Christ. Indeed, of the story of Jesus in the temple at the age of 12. No, this story is profoundly about Christmas, but also about Holy Week, about Easter, and about Pentecost. When you and I were baptised and confirmed, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit as either the priest or the bishop anointed us with that holy oil, the oil of chrism, the oil that is consecrated in Holy Week, and the bishop prays that the Holy Spirit will come down upon us. We were sealed. We were made Christ's in that moment. It's one of the reasons why I have no problem with people using the word Christened. It's a good old medieval English term. It means put on Christ. That's exactly what happens to us at that moment. From that moment on, whatever we do, wherever we go, we are Christ's. And we are 
like these characters we meet in the Christmas stories on our journey, on a journey on a pilgrimage, as Christ's pilgrims to the homeland to which he calls us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so he stands to proclaim the faith of the church. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father of all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became a man. For our sake he was crucified on Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you please be seated? Acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honour the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the waters of the Jordan you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us 
and by the Spirit's descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ your servant has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty. Without end, we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of grace, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. And my good God, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we do dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. John said, I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God.
invite our friends praying this Mass over the internet to use the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in Holy Communion now, at least come spiritually into my heart. As if you have already come to me, I embrace you and join myself wholly to you. Do not allow me to distance myself from you. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just before I give the blessing, um, could I possibly draw your attention to the sheet? Please take it home and have a good look at it. Um, everything this week is as you would expect, all the times at the usual times. Um, and there's the usual um, Saturday lunchtime opportunity once a month at Woodcote for advertised confessions. I think everything else is um, as self explanatory as I could possibly make it. Um, that little thing at the bottom, um, it works both ways. I can't tell you how frustrating it is to have been here for, for several months and uh, not to have imposed myself upon you for a cup of tea or something like that, or a biscuit. I'm quite good at eating biscuits, by the way. Um, and equally, that you haven't been into the house to eat biscuits, or to drink tea, um, or whatever you like. Um, that's the way parish ministry works, and it is so strange not being able to do all of this. Um, you know, we, we hope and we pray. As somebody said after Mass last night, let's hope it's darkest just before the dawn, Father. I know what they mean. Um, but it applies both ways, and also to poor Father Jacob. He's physically tremendously well. Father, if you're watching our greetings from church, um, he'd love to be here. There's nothing more he'd like to be than saying Mass here in public. Um, but until um, things are a little bit uh, more straightforward, he can't be. Um, so we send him our greetings, and please remember him in your prayers. Um, it's, uh, it, he, he doesn't want to be in Compton at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. He wants to be here. But there we are. Um, I think that is it. Our first communion classes. Where are we here? Um, they're going online. I have never arranged a Zoom conference before. So, if at one minute to four on Thursday afternoon it's all going haywire, um, forgive me. Um, I, I try and get somebody else to show me how to do it. I, they promised to give me a lesson. So, we will be on Zoom, amazingly, uh, for our first communion on, um, uh, on uh, Thursday. And just before they're probably taken away to be recycled, may I say a thank you to everybody who was responsible for the decorations around the church. Um, they looked absolutely wonderful. The tree outside, I think is looking fabulous. The angel who's been coming backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards as the um, weather forecast has changed uh, is up there. Um, and the, the red candles and the greenery, I think, look absolutely wonderful. Thank you to the birds for leaving the berries for us for this year. Um, those of you who were here on Wednesday night will have noticed we had a bit of a conflagration. There's one missing. It's actually outside. It needed to be doused. But the good thing was, Mr. Goddard was here, who was a fireman for many years. So we were all safe. We were completely safe. Uh, whatever the week brings, uh, may it be a happy one, may it be a holy one, may it be a safe and a healthy one. And above all, may it be a blessed one in the continued joy of the Feast of the Incarnation of the Son of God, our friend, our brother, and our Saviour, Mary's child, here in our midst, God with us. God bless you all. And to that end, uh, I will use the solemn blessing that the Church gives us for Epiphany. We're still in the week after the Epiphany, so there are four Amens rather than one to end our Mass this morning. The Lord be with you. With your Bow your heads for the blessing. May God, who has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light, pour out in kindness his blessing upon you, 
and make your hearts firm in faith, hope, and charity. Amen. Amen. Since in all confidence you follow Christ, who appeared in the world as a light shining in darkness, may God make you too a light for your brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. So when your pilgrimage is ended, may you come to him whom the Magi sought as they followed the star, and whom they found with great joy, the light from light, who is Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks. 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 Thanks.